Oh, hello everyone. Today we're going to play um, Legendary Encounters The X-Files again. Um, again, seasons one through three. I've made the relevant adjustments um, to make it a little bit easier. So in each starting deck there is now a belief and I actually drew it for both of our protagonists and there are now two informants per season rather than just the one. So let's see how we fare. We start with Scully. We draw an enemy to the shadows. We only have, rec well, we can play the belief card to draw an additional card. And it's another recruit card. Um, so we're going to spend one, two, three, four, five recruit in total. First of all, we're going to scan for one. Um, and this one gives us two recruit, but its ability is a bit, you know, choose a player to take the next turn. Well, you know, uh, I guess you could choose yourself in essentially. So we are then going to scan this one for another one. And that's a card we would prefer to have. So we're going to buy this one. And the one that we have for um, the attack, we won't be able to use. This one attack doesn't do anything. We place and in comes Mulder. He also has a belief card, which allows him to draw one more card. And he has one. Um, four recruit and two attack. With the two attack, he can't really do anything. So he's going to buy a coordinate card for three recruit and he's going to scan this one for one recruit. And that's it. Six cards. Six. How many cards does he have in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thirteen. Okay, that's correct. Okay, good. Okay, so next up is Scully. We move this over. She should have enough attack to start scanning, and she does. One, two, three attacks. So she's going to scan this one. An informant or, um, ongoing. When a player gains a character from the bureau, they can use any bureau power instead. That's really good. So um, we're going to recruit. this gentleman and we're going to actually put him on top of our deck and replace this and for one more we're going to scan this okay throw this away get two more cards Three, four, five, six. Does she have? A, she doesn't have a coordinate card. He doesn't have one either. So we're going to move all of these over. One, two, three. Re, three scans. We're going to scan this one. Aha. Uh, this one will strike from the shadows. Um, we're going to take this one. And we're also going to use a different ability to gain a belief. And all of this goes into our discard pile. But we do draw a strike. And it's a miss. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. Let's see, does he have a coordinate card? And he does. So we're going to move all of this over. Um, so let's see, we've got... Um, one strike, three strikes, five recruit plus two more if we want to um, co 
coordinate, we also have two abilities. First of all, we can activate this card to look at the top card of the Academy and we may defeat it. And we actually don't want to defeat it, it's actually a good card. So this one has been spent. And since we played this card with this symbol, we can also activate this card so we can avoid one any one strike this turn. I don't know if there will be strikes, but we will see. First of all, we're going to kill this enemy. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven recruit. First, we're going to scan for one. Um, so we have five left. I'm going to scan this one for three. Um, so we have two left, and we're going to get this card. And we're going to use the ability to gain a belief. And then we are going to get this card, and we're also going to get a belief for this. The coordinate card of Mulder goes away, and he draws one additional card. And there are no strikes, because we have killed the one alien that could have struck, or the one enemy that could have struck. One, two, three, four, five, six. Draw up to six cards. And we have a one, I want to believe card. This moves over. And Mulder has a belief card, so he's going to draw an additional card. And he has, let's see, he's got three strikes. And he's going to scan. And it's another informant. When an event is revealed, discard it without resolving it. And you draw three cards. Okay. So now we're going to um, look into re recruiting. We're going to spend two to recruit this card and gain a belief in the process. We're going to replace this. Then we're going to scan this for one. And we're going to scan this for one. Okay. So these go away. There are no strikes. Scully is going to, well, first of all, we're going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards for Mulder. No coordinate cards. Scully is going to use her belief card to draw an additional card. She now has four strikes. And she's going to use two of them to scan this card. And it's a money two. Um... Okay, we want to get rid of this one. We also have two more strikes, which we can't really use. And we've got two recruit, which we can't really use. Um, that's too bad. So we're going to move this away. Um, oh, yes, we do. We can use the two recruit to scan this one. Okay, it's a syndicate elder. Um, we definitely want to get rid of him. So... What happens next is this card gets defeated out of the game. Scully draws up to two cards, uh, to six cards. She doesn't have any strikes to face um, because the money two is still in the shadows. Three, four, five, six. She has no coordinate cards as far as I can tell. Yeah, she doesn't. So now it's Fox Mulder. The money two comes down. Let's see if we can do something about it, and we can't, which is not good. But we can play four cards, F4 recruit, and get rid of the Syndicate Elder. We're going to put this to the side and replace this card. And for the two strikes, we're going to scan this, and it's an event which we can actually discard. When an event is revealed, discard it without resolving it. And you draw three cards, which is quite helpful. So we're going to put these here. We're going to draw three cards. And here's two cards, one of which is a 
I want to believe, and we then have to shuffle the discard pile without the cards that we just played with because they're still it's still his turn. So, um, so he draws another card and it's another strike. He uses the belief card to draw another card, so he's got two strikes which he can't use and one recruit which he also cannot use, but still. Um, so he puts these away, he now draws a strike. It's a flesh wound. <laughs> if this enemy damages you with a flesh wound, you become an enemy creature Manitou with this power until the end of your next turn. Move your avatar to the field, skip your action and strike phase next turn. You strike other players. Okay. I wonder if they can kill you or if this is just an, a normal thing that's going to happen. Okay. So uh, we move this over. Uh, so it's not really looking too good. Um, we, we will have to bite the bullet and get a coordinate card. We also have three left, so we're going to scan this card. Um, we have one strike, we can't do anything about it, so we get struck twice. Um, permanent damage. If you survive the strike, your oldest strike becomes a car scar. We don't have one. And the second one, um, it's a flesh wound. So now <laughs> Scully becomes the um, avatar. So now um, he comes back because now he can actually play. One, two, three, four, five, six. The informant moves down. Um, so first of all we have two belief cards let's draw two more cards they're not the cards that we wanted this is terrible um, we, we can only recruit really okay so first of all we're going to use the reassignment and we're going to choose ourselves well I mean to take the next turn so it's three, five, six coordinate cards. We're gonna get this card here and we're gonna put it to the bottom of our deck, which doesn't really matter. So now we're gonna be removing this card and we're gonna be struck twice, hopefully not a flesh wound, a puncture and a fracture. So <laughs> marginally better. So Dana Scully comes back um, but she can't act, so we will have to get rid of this guy. So um, we draw this card, and then we three, four, five, six. This one comes down, moves them all over. And it's Primordial Ice Worms, ongoing. This enemy can't be fought unless a coordinate card has been played this turn. First of all, we're gonna get rid of the guy here because he's terrible. Um, Activate scanner space in the shadows or bureau for each revealed defeated construct. Have we got any of those? No, we don't. So we can't use this ability and we've used the three strikes. We've got two more strikes which we're going to use to scan this one and it is an enemy construct. Um, and we have four recruit which we're going to spend two on this. Card and we're going to heal our most recent strike in so doing and we're going to use two to scan this one and that's it then we're going to get struck by this and it is a fracture again so we healed one and we're getting a second one one oh actually yeah, well, um, I didn't, because uh, I could have gotten rid of this one, because there's actually um, three recruits. I could have 
taken this one out as well. So now it's Scully. And let's see what she can do. She has... There are no coordinate cards in play at the moment. She's got two belief cards. She's going to draw two more cards. And she's got another belief card. She's going to draw one more card. So now she has three strikes. And she also can activate the leftmost hidden card. She needs to resolve her doubt. Each player defeats a belief in their hand or discard pile. Since she's already played them, so it's really him. If you've already played them, I guess it doesn't really apply to you. Does she have any in her discard? No, she does not. Okay. Um, she can... She can't, unfortunately, activate this one. This is a pity. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use one to get rid of this primordial worm thing. She has three to kill this thing, which is tech immunity, but she's not using tech. And it means she has three recruit left. She's going to use two and gain a belief in the process, replace it and scan this one. And that's that. So. And she draws up to six cards. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Does she have any coordinate cards in her? Mm, no, she does not. So this one comes down. Everything moves over. We still haven't discovered a lead. This is not going well, people. We have three strikes. Hmm. So first we're going to scan this card. And it is defeat each revealed character in the bureau. Swell. We have two. We're going to scan this one and this one. We're going to suffer a strike. And it is another puncture. Three, four, five, six. Um, this one comes down. Oh, it's okay. Well, that's not so terrible. We gain her as an as a card. Okay, let's see. Do you have a coordinate card? Yeah, he does. So, um, but does it make sense to use it? Yeah, we're going to use the coordinate ability and this card to defeat this enemy. Sorry, this one goes over there. Then, we are making use of the fact that we have two technical cards. Um, first of all, we're going to look at the top card of the Academy. And we may defeat it, but we won't because it's actually a good card. Then we're going to activate this ability, which means we need to have another card of these played to avoid any strikes. So this guy can do whatever he likes. We're not going to um, be struck. We have five. Um, so we're going to scan this one for two. When this enemy is resolved in the shadows, move it, revealed in the shadows, move it to the fields, and then we get a lead. Okay. Discover evidence. Play at least two coordinate cards in a single turn. Field at the end of the turn, each player gains a doubt. Okay. Okay, good. So, um, we have one more, which we can't use. Um, so that's fine. We can avoid one strike, but we still draw one strike. And it is a, if you survive this strike, your oldest strike becomes a scar. Okay, so she's now got a scar. And draws up to six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we need to play two coordinate cards, coordinate cards on one turn to reveal 
a lead. So first of all, we get one additional one. So we are going to play his two belief cards to draw two more cards, sorry. Two cards. Aha, okay, so. And we need to play two coordinate cards on one turn to activate this ability. So first of all, we're gonna use our special agent ability to coordinate. From Scully and we're going to use this card to coordinate so yes that works um, and basically Scully draws up to another card so we have three recruit from this which we're going to use together with this to get to get rid of the astral force we have um, we're going to play this and we're going to activate to scan the leftmost space. Defeat one of the team's characters with one or more. Uh, yeah, we're going to defeat this character. But by playing this, we can activate this. And we can choose one of our characters to change its recruit to an attack or vice versa. We're going to choose this card so that we have one, two, three, four strikes. So we're going to get rid of this guy. And we have one recruit left, which we cannot use, but that is fine. So this just goes away and we have successfully discovered an evidence. We're going to use a priority one and look at it. End game has plus two um, defense. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this card. So um, next up is Scully. And we move this over. He draws up to six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and that was her coordinate card. It goes away into the discard pile. He's no coordinate card, so we can't really work on the lead. So what we need to do is we need to, first of all, play her three beliefs and draw three cards. One, two, three. And she has another belief. She draws one more card. Four. Good. Let's see. Um... We're going to activate this to look at the top card of the Academy. And we don't remove it because that's actually a good card. Let's see. We have three in total. Hmm. Let me check how many aliens we have defeated. Uh, one. Only one. So we will scan this one, and it is Phyllis Paddock. You may defeat one of your characters with three or more to defeat this enemy. We don't have one of those. So we have two recruit. No, we're going to get a coordinate card. We're going to be good citizens. One, two, th three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. This moves over one. And we can't get rid of Phyllis, unfortunately. So we're going to play three. We're going to scan this. Okay. This is bad. This is very, very bad. Um, got two recruit. We're going to recruit this and put it on top of our decks. And we've got two more strikes which we can't use. This is very, very bad. Uh, because we don't have any coordinate cards in her hand, so we can't... resolve this one, so it's going to go away at the end. 
of the of this turn. This is bad, okay, so but we've at least managed to uncover one of the ones, so we know what's going to happen. He's got six cards. Oh, sorry, this needs replacing. He's got six cards. One of them is a coordinate card. Great. Okay, so this one comes down. Um, we can't do anything about Phyllis. She's going to be terrible. So we've got two which we can't use, but we could coordinate two, three, five, seven. So we're going to take this card and going to put it on the bottom of our deck, gain another one and scan it at the same time. And Fox Mulder draws another card, so I mean he needs to um, So, okay, at the end of the turn, each player gains a doubt, then defeat this card. Okay, so it gets defeated, unfortunately, and we all gain a doubt. One, two, three, four, six. So this one comes down. One, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so she has this lady to deal with. She's going to draw another card. So this card we drew, uh, we gained earlier. It's an enemy which we then put straight into the field. Two. Okay. For four, we're going to destroy this guy. And for three, we're going to scan over here, and it's an event. Defeat the top academy character of the, of the academy. Each player defeats each card in their hands. Um, it's the lone gunman I, in their hands, decks, and discard pile with the same title. So we're looking for this card, and I do believe someone has one. Yes, it's Gully who's got one, so this one goes away. Um... I don't think Mulder has this card. No, he doesn't. Okay. It's not ideal, but it's not terrible because it could have been worse. So this one moves away. So um, that's pretty much all we can do. So we're going to now get two strikes. Gain a doubt. One point of damage. And fracture. So now she's at five points of damage in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, okay, she has a coordinate card, very important. So first we're going to um, use her coordinate ability to defeat this enemy. And she gets another card for this. And then we have one left, which we're going to use to scan. And we're gonna buy this card, because we still have one. We could just put it to the bottom, on the bottom of our deck, because that only cost three, so we got one. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We can't do anything about this lady because we don't have any expensive cards, but we do have this one. We're going to scan. It's an event. The next player draws a strike. If that is not a miss, the player after that draws a strike. Okay, so she draws a strike. It is, if you survive this strike, your oldest strike becomes a scar. Well, she does. Okay. 
then if that strike is not a miss, okay, so everyone draws one, okay, tis but a flesh wound, okay. Um, and then we have two more which we can't use, so these ones go away. And we draw a strike from Phyllis Paddock. Oh god, I think we just lost Mulder. We did, he's dead. Okay, Mulder's dead, so we can finish the game because um, we have to end it because there is no way we can now continue playing. Um, having more informants obviously helps, um, I have no doubt. Um, and, I am ex uh, and I am enjoying myself. I mean, this is a really, really good game. I think they've implemented the theme very, very well. I've said this before. And yeah, I hope um, you uh, have been inspired by um, this playthrough. If you are looking for a deck builder, which has a lot of flavor, and if you like, and I think this is important, you need to enjoy the X-Files because I think you get more out of it if you, know, you reveal characters that you know or you reveal um, enemies that you know. Um, or you can impersonate, you can, I don't want to say impersonate, but you can play as someone that you know from the game. I think that makes um, a huge difference. So if you're looking for a deck builder, that isn't too difficult to learn. I mean, it's not um, a difficult game. And it's also a game um, which plays really, really quickly. It's also a very unforgiving game. And you have to accept the fact that... Um, it is very luck based, like any deck builder um, where you start with a basic deck and then start buying cards, unlike a deck construction game, it is very luck based. It depends on the timing of cards coming out um, and what cards uh, you can buy and um, what is in the offering and what isn't and what um, enemies are coming out when. Um, I've played this with an easy version, like the, the one where, where I have... Um, uh, put into informants and um, per season as well as um, giving everyone a belief to begin with and I won last night and I actually won quite easily um, although I made it harder for myself because I didn't um, quite use the evidence stack correctly but as you can see today under the same circumstances but with different um, story events um, coming out and different informants and different leads it has been impossible for me to win actually I didn't even get close to uh, winning because I died on the way so like I said um, it is an unforgiving game but if you um, don't have a problem with being frustrated and if you don't mind luck games but luck based games which a deck builder is and you like the x-files then I can really recommend it I think it retails at around £50 in the UK, um, €60, Euros. but for that you get good quality cards, you get a really nice playmat, and you get a good game experience, so I can really, really recommend it. So I'll talk to you soon, and happy Christmas. Bye!